Good morning. Thank you for joining us for our weekly series on financial resources and things that we're here at the Chandler Chamber to help your business. Um, my name is Terry Kimball and I'm the President and CEO here at the Chandler Chamber and I have four really exciting new grant opportunities that are available for your businesses. This program series could not be made possible without um, we are partnering in conjunction with the Chandler um, City of Chandler Industrial Development Authority and to provide funding um, and opportunities for your business. So let's go ahead and get started. Just a couple of things, um, please. I will be taking questions in the chat box. Also, this PowerPoint presentation, we will email out to each of you upon completion of uh, attending this today's um, session so that you will have that along with the direct links for everything that I'm going to share with you. So let's talk about the newest grant funding opportunities. Um, the first one is our Maricopa County Small Business and Nonprofit Relief Grants. This just opened on Monday and we're gonna talk about that. That is up to $25,000 um, potentially for businesses. There's the I Choose Chandler Business Retention and Hiring Program. That is up to, could be up to $10,000, um, $1,300 per employee uh, to a maximum of $10,000. And we're gonna get into the particulars on that. That is through the city of Chandler. Um, and both the Maricopa County and the I Choose Chandler Program are both because of CARES funding that has come down to local entities, local governments. So that is really important. The, the next program I'm going to talk about is the Choose Chandler PPE Reimbursement Program. And this is a real simple, it's up to a $500 if you are located within the city of Chandler and we'll go through the criteria. That is made possible through the Chandler, City of Chandler Industrial Development Authority. The fourth program that we're gonna talk about today is about Local First Arizona. It's the Arizona Small Business Rent and Mortgage Relief Program. This is actually through the state of Arizona and Local First Arizona are the administrators for that program. And we're gonna talk about that rent and mortgage relief for those businesses that have been shut down due to COVID. And that can also be additional up to $25,000. Plus, I have a bonus for you um, on a new program that will be hitting, and I'll give you a, just a sneak peek of, peek of what's happening with that. So I want to start off with the Maricopa County Small Business Nonprofit Relief Grants. I have put down an email for you here, as well as the actual link to the website to be able to apply for these programs. The first one on the Maricopa County um, relief, it is, um, the intent is to support the viability of small business and nonprofits across the valley. So this does this just means that you have to be located within Maricopa County. It's for-profit businesses and 501c3s. Um, if you are in the city of Mesa or the city of Phoenix, you are not eligible. They do have additional programs because there were dish, um, different monies that went directly to those cities. And if you want more information on those particular grants, we can send you that link as, as well. While the funding is available, applying for the grant does not guarantee these funds um, will be awarded because there are some hoops that you are gonna have to jump through. And this program is actually administered through the Arizona Community Foundation. So you're thinking, well, wait a minute. Um, they've had this program before, what's different? So I've put this slide to up here to show you. The first one was the program, the first version of the program through Maricopa County. And that happened between July 9th and July 31st. And that was up to $10,000 per um, company. And you can see here some of the qualifications, maximum number of employees and so forth. That program has closed as of July 31st. We work with the Maricopa County um, Board of Supervisors, and I do have to give a shout out to our own supervisor, Jack Sellers, because he really listened to what businesses had to say. Because one of the criteria was, is that you couldn't have received PPP or idle monies or any of these other types of programs in order to get this money. 
they have since went back in and adjusted that program and that's what you'll see on the right hand side and we're going to go through this now the program period this just opened on monday and it goes through october 2nd or until the funds are diminished the award amount is could be up to twenty five thousand dollars it removes the pre-qualification component maximum number of employees is 50 now maximum gross sales is up to five million and the reference period for sales lost is March through June. And then the required documentation, although they have removed the balance sheet, there are still some parameters and some paperwork that you're gonna have to um, apply, comply with. And we're gonna go through that. So again, the first round is closed July 31st. This latest round opened this past Monday and goes through October 2nd. Now, the grants will be awarded on a rolling basis until the funds are exhausted or the grant period closes. So let's talk about these. Um, you know, I had mentioned briefly in that that side by side chart, um, they have to be in operation in Maricopa County, but within but not within the cities of Mesa or Phoenix um, prior to January 1st of 2019. That date is really important. They have to employ 50 or fewer employees as of March 1st, and that's full time equivalents. Um, so how they measure that is full time equivalents, and you'll hear me say this over and over again. 40 hours a week is a full-time employee. If you have two employees that are working part-time, those two employees can equal up to one FTE. You cannot generate more than $5 million in gross revenues between January 1, 2019 and December 31st, 2019. You have to show a gross revenues that have declined at least 25% as a result of COVID from March through June of this year, as compared to March through June of 2019. And I'll walk you through a great spreadsheet on that. You also have to meet some zoning requirements. You have to have the proper zoning entitlements. Um, you can't have any active enforcements against you. And that you have to be in compliance with any county um, or respective city or town and that law enforcement hasn't taken any action that you are operating on a business. You also have to be in good standing with the Arizona Corporation Commission. And then there's also a couple of other caveats and I'll just briefly mention a couple and then we will give you the direct links for further information. So um, there are, um, um, you can't be an adult oriented business, not engaged in the growth and harvest or storage or distribution of any cannabis or medical recreational um, purposes. Um, and you can't be owned by a Maricopa County official or employees. So let's go on. Do the grant need, um, need to be paid back? No. By any grant funds, any income earned on those funds are not spent or committed for the purposes of the grants. They must be, um, so for instance, if you are not using these for your intended purposes, you have to give those back. The application and review, um, and review process. The Arizona Community Foundation, they have some great resources on this site. They are going to actually be reviewing the application for eligibility and reviewing on a rolling basis. Um, and the applicants will be notified within two business days um, of the receipt of their completed application, as well as all the supporting documentation, whether they have been awarded it or not. And then when can my business um, expect to receive um, funds if I am awarded? Um, grant funds will be issued by a check within 15 day business days of the award notification to the recipients. And the recipients will receive communication via email. Next one. What will all qualified applicants receive the full $25,000? Um, this is a great question. Any eligible small business and not profits to receive funds um, can receive those up to 25,000. 
the awards will be calculated based upon your actual losses determined by gross revenues and the decline between March through June of 2020 and March through June of 2019. And I'm going to talk about that um, spreadsheet here, and I've got a sample of that. Again, this is the information for the actual um, how to apply for that. Also, they are really good about answering emails. So this is a great way um, for um, you to be able to um, ask questions on your particular business. I also want to do another shout out to Jack Sellers because Supervisor Sellers, he really listened to what our businesses um, wanted to hear. Let's talk about some of the pre-qualifying questions on this particular program. So we talked about the business nonprofit in operation prior to the 50 employees. It can't generate more than the 5 million and their gross revenues declined. They're also going to ask you some generic questions on, grant, on the grant to application. Um, name of your business, nonprofit, or are you a nonprofit? Um, your address, phone, email, those typical things that you fill out on an application. They're going to ask you if you received funding in phase one. If yes, what was that amount? Um, business description. Now, this is what you want to have ahead of time before starting that. They are going to ask you for a business description, about 1,500 characters. So just to get you prepared and get that information um, for you. Um, the type of business that you have when the business opened and the number of FTEs prior to March 1st. Additional grant application questions that they're gonna ask. And again, I'm going through these so that you can have that documentation ready so that when you go to fill this out, it's boom, boom, boom. Um, the description of the impact. How has this impacted your business? Tell them how, whether you've had to close or you've had to limit service, what, what, tell your story a little bit. Explain how the grant is going to help you with your business on retaining your employees um, and maintaining just overall viability. And they do have character limits on this. So on this application, it's a fillable form, but that, that's a good way to kind of judge what you're going to say ahead of time. They also want to know how the funds are going to be utilized. Are these going to be used for payroll? Is it going to be used for debt, um, rent, utilities? Do you have vendors, outstanding invoices that you have to pay? So making sure that you have some of that thought through in your head beforehand is really important. They are going to, these are some of the required documents. Um, and again, there's a complete list with the link at the bottom of the page, but they are going to want a schedule of monthly gross receipts, and I'm going to show you a template on how to um, easily compute that. They're going to want documentation of your 2019 and 2020 monthly totals, your point of sales, computer sales, tax filings, those kinds of things. Um, IRS form W-9. Um, they are going to want, and this is pretty standard depending on no matter what kind of grant that you apply for, you are going to have to have a W-9, and this is a fillable form that you can download from the IRS website or if you just put in your search engine IRS form W-9. Also on the Community Foundation page, there is a direct link to a, a W-9 form there. You'll also have to sign an affidavit an affidavit attesting that you are going to meet all these criteria that in order to receive these funds. And for nonprofits, um, you will have to also submit your IRS determination letter. And this, um, and again, this link here will go into complete detailed information on that. Here's a sample of the monthly gross revenue. Um, and I really like this. They have a template that you can download on this website as well as follow along with this. So it's pretty simple. You put January through December and then 2019, 2020, and then you can calculate it. Um, and it's pretty self-explanatory. And there, if you download their template, this will automatically calculate it once you put in your numbers. 
It's pretty easy to do. On there, you can also apply online, and this is how to apply online. And I want to give a shout out to Maricopa County and this on this particular um, one. Through the Arizona Community Foundation on this website, they have a step-by-step -step video instruction. It's about a little over three minutes, and it actually walks you through each step of the application, what specifically that they're doing. So for a little over three minutes of your time, it is well worth it. Great information for you to um, get started on this program. The second program that I want to talk about is the I Choose Chandler hiring, um, Business Hiring and Retention Program. This is through CARES funding through the City of Chandler, and the Arizona Community Foundation is also the administrator of this program. I've put the question link on here, and again, they're really quick about getting um, back to you, sending an email. Sometimes when you send a blind email, you're wondering, oh my gosh, is it going to go into a black hole? But we've had really great response time on them getting back to us. And then here's a direct link on how to apply for where you can find that particular grant on their website. So let's talk about the I Choose Chandler Business Hiring and Retention Program. Um, this is to provide qualifying businesses with up to $1,300 per employee retained or hired since December 31st of 2019, with a maximum of up to $10,000. These funds are, to, are intended to provide a direct benefit for Chandler businesses that are keeping, it's to keep your employees on payroll as you have to adjust revenue losses during this whole um, disruption. The City of Chandler has allocated about $9.5 million that is available. It is on a first come first serve basis. It's the same as the Maricopa one. So that's a key critical component there. While funding is available, the total amount is based upon employees retained or, or hired. Um, as well as applying for the grant does not just automatically guarantee that you're going to um, have those funds awarded. Um, the Arizona Community Foundation will go through, review that, proceed with eligible um, businesses, and then take that on to the next step. Couple of things to be um, aware of. This program just opened this past Monday. And again, first come first serve basis. Some of the qualifications. Now, due to the governor's executive order, the city of Chandler actually tailored their grant program a little bit differently. And how they did this is they actually took certain industries that they felt were hardest hit so far with COVID. Now, again, um, if, if these funds are not distributed, they may open it up in future to other industries, but that is not a guarantee. So here's a little bit of, a, uh, of an example if you fall within any of these particular industries. I've also put a link at the bottom of the page where you can click on there and actually if you're not sure whether your industry falls in here, it's best to go to that website to find that out. Accommodations and food services, healthcare and social assistance, retail trade, administrative support, waste management and remediation services, some manufacturing, arts, entertainment and recreation are some of the key areas that these that can apply for these grants. You do have to be a private for-profit business located within the city of Chandler. This is not for nonprofits. There's a different program through nonprofits, through neighborhood services, and we can get you that information if you're interested in that. This program has, you can have, it's got to have 100 full-time employees or fewer and including all commonly owned or managed businesses. And again, that FTE that I talked about, one FTE is for those employees that work 40 hours, those who work under um, 40 hours, it's um, two, um, it's 0.5 FTEs. So depending, you need to take a look at that where you're at. So if you've got a bunch of part-timers, you may wanna consider that. You are going to have to submit a copy of your 2019 IRS Form 941, your employer's, um, your federal tax um, return. 
also your latest quarter of the 941. Um, just to kind of verify that employee hiring or retention. Um, and then this documentation should show a number of um, employees for a final pay period. Now, let's say that you've already submitted your 941 for this year and you've hired some additional ones. Um, if you go to their website, there are some additional, on the Arizona Community Foundation website, there are some additional things that you can add additional documentation to comply with. You do have to submit your IRS Form W-9. You can't be affiliated with another business under common ownership. So for instance, let's say that you have a restaurant, you own two different restaurants. Um, only one of these businesses um, is going to be eligible um, as long as it's under the same ownership or management can apply. You can't be a home-based businesses. Businesses must own or lease non-residential property. This is really to help out that you're for the, your companies for bricks and mortar. If the business leases a property, the business also must commit to being in business through December of this year, December 31st, 2020. Um, you have to have a start date prior to March 11th of 2020 of the governor's declaration. So for instance, you had to have started your business prior to that date. The other caveat is you do need to be a registered business within the city of Chandler. And I've put a link here and you're probably wondering, well, am I a registered business within the city of Chandler? This is an annual, um, the city of Chandler has a business registration license. It's, I think it's about a $45 um, fee. I did put the applic or the link to the application. Just go ahead and get your business registered. It's pretty simple. That's, that's an even shorter form to fill out. You're asking, okay, what kind of information do I need to provide? Again, I've done it in a snapshot here. All of this is on that um, Arizona Community Foundation um, org backslash I choose Chandler program. So you're going to need that completed W-9, your 941s, um, and then um, for verification. One of the questions that came up is, do I need to pay this back? No. That's the beauty of this program. It's really to help incentivize your business. What is this? another question we get asked is what is that application and review? Well, how, how are they going to determine whether my business is eligible? The community foundation will review the applications. And again, this is on an ongoing basis. So, but as soon as the funds are exhausted, that's it. Um, applicants will be notified of their application status. Um, and they are to distribute, once they're approved, they will distribute the funds within 15 business days of receipt of the completed applications. And they're actually, they'll mail you a check on that. When can my um, small business or nonprofit expect to receive that? Again, 15 days. Um, you'll receive communications via email, um, and it's all done through the Arizona Community Foundation website. Um, what if I apply, will I, am I automatically granted the $10,000? Awards are calculated, but again, I go back to that FTE, that full-time equivalent of employees retained and hired since December 31st, 2019. Eligible businesses qualified to receive these grants, it's about $1,300 per FTE. Um, and again, both full-time and part-time do count towards that total. So again, walking you through that, getting that clear in your head before you apply. Here again is how to apply online. You do have to register again with that Arizona Community Foundation interface. Um, and there is that step-by-step -step video instructions on how to do that. And again, it's about a three minute video, but it goes and tells you how to go ahead and get registered on that. All right, here's that information on that second program that I just talked about, the I Choose Chandler Business Hiring and Retention Program. The next program, and I, and I did these in sections so that you can see kind of 
was, I may be eligible for this one, I may not be. Um, so that you can clearly decide because I've got a lot of information coming at you today. The next program is the um, Choose Chandler. It's the PPP reimbursement, PPE reimbursement program. This is for the Personal Protective Equipment Reimbursement Program. This is done right through our City of Chandler Economic Development Department. Micah and his team are doing a great job. I do have the link here as well. They are taking questions and we're gonna walk you through what that program is all about. Um, this is made in, in part with the Chandler Industrial Development Program and the Economic Development Par Department through the City of Chandler. It is a reimbursement program for assistance to small businesses for anything that you may have purchased regarding personal protective equipment. A qualifying business, um, it is a dollar amount between $100 and $500. And the Industrial Development Authority has made about $200,000 available for the program. Um, I know that as of a week ago, they were only about halfway through that program, so they are still distributing. And again, this changes daily, so get your receipts in, and we're going to talk about that. Um, and it's pretty easy to do. So is all you have to do is submit an application. And it's an application, you go online, you print it out, you fill it out, you attach your receipts detailing the purchases, along with a business, a IRS W-9 form. I said that W-9 form, you're going to hear this in each of the grants, and that's really important. In order to be eligible, you have to be a private for-profit business within the city of Chandler limits. Again, that 100 employees, not affiliated with another um, business under the same ownership. You also have to have be open prior to March 11th, and you have to be a registered business within the city of Chandler. So again, I have these links, and they're also on our business resource page, as well as the city of Chandler's business resource page. <coughs> what is a reimbursable purchase or expense? This is for PPP, anything that falls within the CDC guidelines for you reopening, such as masks, face shields, gloves, hand sanitizers, sneeze guards, um, washable, your, your cleansing, um, disposable restaurant menus, disinfectant products. It's pretty broad range and open. So if you've incurred those additional costs, this is an easy way to do that. Um, they will reimburse for the purchase price plus shipping and handling. They will not reimburse for sales tax. So that's important to note. It's pretty easy to do. And I will tell you, the team over at the city has been really, really quick in getting this done. You fill out the application. I have the link right there for you to fill out the application. Fill out an IRS W-9 form. Link is right there. Put a copy of your receipts. Submit it to economic development, boom, one, two, three. Pretty easy to do. Um, as long as you meet the guidelines and the paperwork that you have in order, um, they're cutting checks in approximately one week. So you can receive a check in, in it's, it's about a week turnaround. Um, you know, if you turn it in on a Friday, it may be a little bit longer, but it's approximately one week turnaround to receive those funds. Program opened on Jan June 15th, and it is available until those funds are exhausted. Again, it's on a first come, first time, come basis, and it is just a one time. You can only go back, even though you may be buying masks or gloves or, or hand sanitizers, you may be buying hand sanitizers once a month. This is a, a, only a one time thing. So gather all those receipts to get them as close to the 500 as you can. Again, questions on this program, City of Chandler Economic Development Department, as well as this link um, for um, the actual application. The final um, program I want to talk about today is the Arizona Small Business Rent and Mortgage Relief Program. This actually is going live as we speak. So I have as much information that was available as of last night at midnight. So again, here's an email. Also, if you have questions regarding this, 
as well as the website on how to apply and you'll be seeing this again at the end um, at the end of this one so let's talk about this um, program this is the Arizona small business rent and mortgage relief program the governor's office is partnering with Arizona um, Local First Foundation to launch this program to help small businesses, specifically those that have been mandated to pause operations dur during this pandemic. Um, qualified businesses um, only include gyms, fitness centers, studios, bars, water parks, and others that have been named in this executive order. The applications, like I said, open today at 10 a.m., so you're hearing it first. This is what the grant covers. The grant covers actually up to two months of rent and mortgage payments due by small businesses. The maximum award is $25,000. The grants will also be prioritized for businesses with fewer than 50 current employees, as well as the most in need of funding to meet their mortgage or rent obligations. The other criteria is that they haven't had access to other financial support. Here are some of the um, business eligibility for this program. They must be doing business in Arizona prior to January 1st, 2020. Now this is different. This is a different deadline or a different um, eligibility than the other two previous programs that I talked about. They must be directly impacted by the executive order. The applicant business must be renting or leasing a physical location outside of the owner's personal residence, employing less than 50 employees based upon W-2 full-time. And again, that FTE, um, we're, you hear that on each of these grants. And then each business owner may apply only for one location one grant. Individuals with multiple locations may not apply for rent at each of your locations. So figure out which is going to be the best fit for this program. Businesses can start prepping the following information because that is just going live at 10 o'clock, but I put together some key things. This, is, this may not be a complete list, so making sure that you're going to that local First Arizona website and clicking on to making sure, but this is a good start for you to gather that information. You're going to need your rent and mortgage statements for June, July, August, September. Um, also, if you have any of your utility or, or October, and if you have any of your utilities included in there, you are going to have to back out that utility amount because this is just for rent or mortgage relief. You're going to have to provide information regarding sources of income. Um, preference will be given to those businesses which are the primary sole source of income to the owners. Um, you are going to have to provide verification of cash on hand as well as that the business is in good standing with the Arizona Department of Revenue. So making sure um, everything is up to date. Here are some frequently asked questions on this particular program. Does my business have to be in, um, impacted by the governor's executive order? Yes, it does. Does my business need to be one of the listed types of businesses in order to qualify? Yes, it does. And I've got a listing here. And you can also reference this right directly on that website. What if I'm a restaurant that has adjusted my operations, but I was not required to close under the executive order? Am I eligible for this grant? No, your business was not, if it was not specifically ordered to shut down or pause operations, then you're not eligible for this. Um, there could be other financial assistance opportunities um, that are available, again, through the cities and some of those other grants. So if, again, those links are all on our business resource page. I'm a bar that was required to pause operations under the governor's executive order, but continue to serve through public through pickup, delivery, and or drive through operations. Am I eligible? Yes. <laughs> what type of business do I need to have in order to qualify? As, again, as long as your business pausing operations and you fit that criteria, you have to be registered, you have to have a physical location in the state of Arizona, 
and register to do business prior to just January 1st of this year. What does it mean to be in good standing with the Arizona Department of Revenue? Good standing means that you don't have any liens um, that have fi been filed against you um, or by the Department of Revenue. What if my business includes multiple locations that qualify for that renter mortgage assistance under this program? Can I apply for more than one? No, not at this time. Um, so again, it's one per, it's only one. Are there restrictions on the way I can spend the funds that I receive? Yes, you are required to spend the funds on rent or mortgage insurance for your business. Any other use of the funds will constitute fraud and you'll be required to repay those funds before December of this year. You're also gonna be required to sign a statement agreeing to these terms before you can receive these funds. And there's a couple of other ones that you're gonna to have to sign off on saying that you comply. How do I calculate my rent or mortgage payment? You'll be required to electronically submit a copy of your rent invoice or mortgage statement from the months June, July, August, September, October, and or November 2020. Um, if you can't produce that statement from those months, you're not gonna be eligible. So make sure you have that documentation. The utilities, as I said before, in order to treat everybody equally, utility costs cannot be considered for this grant at this time. Is there a limit of time limit when I need to pay my rent or mortgage? For assistance you may receive for rent or mortgage payments that are past due, you are required to pay your landlord or mortgage holder within seven days of receipt of the funds. This is really important. For rent or mortgage assistance you may receive that is not yet due, you have to pay it on time by the due date. Failure to do so is going to result in forfeiture of those funds. So again, this is a key thing. If you're behind, you have seven days to pay it once you receive the funds. If you haven't received the invoice and it's for under upcoming, um, you can um, just make sure that you pay it by the due date. What if I receive PPP loan? Can I still apply for this grant? Yes, we encourage you to apply. However, those funds do not have, may, they're gonna prioritize those people that are in need. What if I received idle loans? Can I still apply? Yes, you are encouraged to apply. However, those who have not received funds can be prioritized. What if I don't have any employees? Am I still qualified? Um, yes, a business with less than 50 full-time employees as long as you have a physical location outside of your residence. And the pur purposes of calculating the number of employees, part-time are considered 0.5, while well, full-time are considered to be 1.0. 1, 1 um, and then again, that eligibility for 50 employees and how to calculate that FTE. My business has more than 50 employees, but the location for which I'm applying for rent or mortgage assistance, assistance has fewer than 50 employees. Am I still eligible? No, the employee count for the purpose of this grant is not limited to the location for which you are applying for the, um, for the grant. My business is limited by not being able to convene groups of 50 or more. Am I gonna qualify for this grant? No, eligibility for the grant is for those businesses required to pause operations as described in that executive order. So making sure that you're going back to that executive order is really important. Do I need to be current on my rent or mortgage? And we talked about that. No, you may be in arrears, um, but you must still legally be the renter or leasee or owner of your physical um, business presence. What if I've been evicted from my bus business presence? May I apply to receive backdated rent or mortgage payments? No, your business presence, premises must be available to you for the purposes of operating your business. What if I'm in receipt of an eviction notice from my landlord? May I still apply? Yes, you may apply, but the future viability of your business may be considered when determining whether to grant this award under this program. And again, that's through Arizona Local First. Their team will be making those determinations based upon the paperwork that you've submitted. 
The bank has foreclosed on my mortgage. May I receive backdated mortgage payments? No, your business premises has to still be available for you to operate your business. What if you've negotiated deferred rent or mortgage payments with your landlord or your bank? Can you still apply? Absolutely. Um, what if you owned other businesses that have been impacted by the governor's executive order and are still operating? May I still apply? Yes. <laughs> if accepted, if my application and I go through all the hoops, if I'm accepted, how soon can I expect the funds? Within seven to 10 business days upon approval. How will your business be notified? This one will be notified by phone or email. Um, who will be receiving the applications and again, making those decisions? It is Arizona Local First. They have a statewide committee that they've assembled to be able to review these applications. Um, my business provides a sexually explicit entertainment. May I apply? No. <laughs> That is part of the criteria. And again, please go to their website full, full of description, making sure that you don't fall under those. What if I live in my out of state, but own a business in Arizona, may I qualify? As long as you meet the other criteria that's outlined in the program and you are using the funds to pay for rent or mortgage for your Arizona based business, yes, you may qualify. And here is that information on the local first Arizona. Again, that email, they're really quick about that. It's just, I know that I emailed them, I've emailed them several times asking questions, making sure I had this information available to you, as well as then here is the link to their website. A bonus, um, we have a program, so watch out for this. If you are located within the city of Chandler, we're currently working with economic development, hoping to be able to announce this program with the city of Chandler here pretty quickly. If you need PPE equipment, I think we're gonna be able to um, have an additional program for you. There will be some particular um, limitations and it's going to be only one per business um, but it's going to be a great program so watch out and that's available for Chandler businesses um, criteria. So I know I have just hit you with a ton of information that's why these slides will be available and made available to you. Um, so let's go ahead and I am going to open it up for questions. Okay. Um, my business address is in Mesa, first question, but my location is in Chandler. Am I still eligible? What if I just opened in October? Um, again, you're going to have to, if you're talking about the I Choose Chandler program, um, you're going to have to comply with um, that particular those. It has to be in business prior to that January deadline. Um, and then your location, depending on how you fill out that form, they're going to require a bunch of documentation and that 941 information and so forth. And again, using that other spreadsheet too can also kind of help you walk through some of these questions. Can the next question is, can the grant be used for lease termination settlement funds? Um, you know what, that is a really great question. And again, that one, I would shoot that information, that question to that, um, to the rent and mortgage assistance, um, that info at AZ um, Local First. Um, that would be a great question. And again, we're providing you with this information. We, um, we have great partners that are really the experts on this. Our, our job is to get you this information in hand. Have you been seeing anything for startups that are launching currently in the economic condition for grants? That is a great question. Um, this is something that we are with several of our industry partners that we are looking at and to be able to be addressing. Some startups have been, they did start up in 2019. 
that's still considered a startup. So as long as they're complying um, with those, depending on which grant you're applying for, those startup dates, um, you may be eligible. The next question, the first program. Okay, oh, that's, if you're referring to the first program, is that the Maricopa County one? The Maricopa County one, you have to be in business prior to January 1st, 2019. Because you have to show those two years on that template. Next question, when the grant reimburses for only two months of, men, of rent, why more than two months of rent statements are required? That's a great question. Um, I'm just reading you the requirements. I don't know if they're doing it as a base in case you've received um, um, questions. That would be one that I would absolutely send um, to that info um, email to be able to answer that question. Okay, here's another question. How do I apply for the I Choose Chandler business retention if I'm a dry cleaner? Um, so again, going to that page and seeing those businesses that have been, um, depending on what your um, Anaskis code is, go ahead and clicking on there and seeing if the dry cleaners falls under that. Um, and again, they're also taking questions on that um, and to be able to tell you if you are eligible. Great questions here. Holy cow, you guys were really listening. I know that I have just given you a ton of information um, and there's still a lot that we're learning on this. Um, I do want to just do also a quick update on the PPP program that is obviously not opened at this time. The IDLE program, and you'll have Paula back in a couple of weeks to talk about that program. There are still grant funds that are available. So if you're interested in that IDLE loan, that is a loan, um, up to $150,000, um, please see our business resource page on the Chandler Chamber website to be able to take you to that. Um, and we do have lenders that are able to still help and assist you get those monies through with those funds. So thank you again for joining us and I appreciate um, your willingness and we're really here to help you. Also, if you have burning questions, please feel free to either text us, send us an email here at the Chandler Chamber. You can either send it directly to myself at terry at chandlerchamber.com. That's T-E-R-R-I at chandlerchamber.com. And we will certainly be able to hopefully address those questions. And if not, we will get back to you and get you the experts that you need to be able to do that. Our main concern is making sure your businesses are staying open and staying healthy and making sure that we're continuing to keep this economy rolling. So thank you again, and um, we will see you again next week, same time, Thursday, 10 a.m., on more tips to help keep your businesses open. Thank you.